Hello and welcome back to Probability Theory, the video course where we talk a lot about random variables. And in today's part 22, we will talk about the so-called conditional expectation, where the condition is also given by a random variable. So you see, this makes it even more general than the conditional expectation from the last video. However, we will not discuss the whole abstract definition, but we will look at some special situations. Simply because it's quicker and we will need them later when we talk about stochastic processes. However, as always, before we start, I really want to thank all the nice people who support the channel on Steady, here on YouTube, on Patreon or by other means. And please don't forget, as a supporter, you can download exercises, quizzes and the PDF version for the videos. Okay, then let's immediately start by recalling what we have defined in the last video. There, we considered a random variable x and now let's say this is a discrete one. And moreover, we also needed an event b and this should have probability greater than zero. And then we could just define the conditional expectation ex given b. So this is the expectation of the random variable when we already know that b will occur. Now, in general, we can write that as an abstract integral where we use the conditional probability measure here. However, for a discrete random variable, we have seen that this is a very simple sum in the end. Namely, we can just sum over all possible outcomes of the random variable x, and then we just multiply this lowercase x with the conditional probability. So the probability that x has the value lowercase x under the condition b. Indeed, for discrete random variables, this general formula you can just remember for the conditional expectation. Okay, but now assume that we have a second random variable, which should also be discrete. And then our event b should be substituted by y is equal to the value y. So not so complicated and definitely something we can do for the conditional expectation here. This means now instead of ex given b, we write e x given y is equal to y. So you see, it's not really a change, we just choose a very special event for b now. However, for this one, the formula from above is a very good fit. Simply because now we can write the conditional probability as an intersection and as a quotient. Indeed, this is what you already know, this is how the conditional probability is defined. And moreover, here I can already tell you, this numerator here is often called the joint probability mass function of the two random variables. So in short, we would say the joint PMF of x and y. Okay, and now you see, for different values of lowercase y, we get different results in the conditional expectation. In other words, we could say we have a function with the input given as lowercase y. Indeed, if you want, this is a real valued function defined on the real number line as well. So more precisely, it maps r into r. Now on the other hand, we also have the random variable y, which maps omega into r. This means, without any problems, we can look at the composition. So roughly speaking, we put the random variable y into the function f. This means, for this composition here, we just write f of y. And please note, in particular, this is a new random variable defined from omega into r. And exactly this is now what we call the conditional expectation of x given a random variable y. So we see, for discrete random variables, this whole notion here is not so complicated. The only thing we need here is that we know how the conditional expectation from the last video was defined. And then we can also introduce a new notation for that, which is not so complicated because it's again e of x given y. However, please don't forget, this is not a real number now because it denotes a new random variable. And to see that, let's immediately consider an example. And of course, we have to look at discrete examples now. And you might already guess, throwing a die is always a good model. And now the random variable x should just check if the number we throw is an even number. So formally, that means that x of omega is either 1 or 0. More precisely, 1 we get out for the cases 2, 4 and 6. And on the other hand, 
the random variable y should check if the result is 6 or not. Or in other words, did we throw the highest number or not? Also there, more concretely, we would get out values 1 and 0 again. And we get 1 only in the case that omega is equal to 6. Ok, and now the question is, can we calculate the new random variable e of x given y? Ok, so now you know, this condition expectation is a random variable, so we can put in lowercase omegas as well. And only then, we would get out a real number. Now the good thing is, for this example, we can only have two cases for y, namely y is 0 or 1. And indeed, we already know for which omegas this happens, namely the second case is only for omega is equal to 6. Ok, and now for these two cases, we only have to calculate an ordinary conditional expectation like we did it in the last video. And of course, we can just use the formula we have discussed above, and now lowercase x only has two values, 0 and 1. Indeed, this is nice to have, and this comes from x having only two values as well. And since we multiply with x here, we only have to calculate the value of this thing for x is equal to 1. Ok, and then we see, in the numerator, we want that x is equal to 1, which means omega is 2, 4 or 6, and we want that y is equal to 0, which means omega can't be 6. This means here, in the probability, we have exactly 2 out of 6 cases. And then we simply divide by the 5 out of 6 cases. Hence, the result here is 2 divided by 5. Ok, so this was the case that our lowercase y is equal to 0. And now we consider the case that this lowercase y is equal to 1. So this means everything looks the same here. We still sum up two values where x is equal to 1 and 0. And we only have y is equal to 1 there. Hence, this means for the case that x is equal to 1, we only have omega is equal to 6 for the numerator. Therefore, the numerator and the denominator here in the probability are the same. Hence, the result is exactly 1 for omega is equal to 6. So in the end, you see, this conditional expectation captures both cases where y is equal to 0 and y is equal to 1. So in other words, it takes the idea that we don't know the exact outcome of y and puts that into a random variable. Indeed, this is very useful if we have infinitely many outcomes instead of just two. And in fact, we can apply this in stochastic processes later. However, if we talk about infinitely many outcomes, we definitely also want to define that thing in the case that we have an absolutely continuous case. More precisely, this should mean that both random variables x and y are absolutely continuous and together they have a joint density function. In other words, we would see that as a random variable from omega into R2. And then of course, the probability density function we call lowercase f also gets two inputs. So it simply maps from R2 into R. So you could say this is similar to the joint probability mass function for the discrete case before. And in fact, if we see it in this way, we can just generalize the formula from above as well. This means the condition expectation of x given y is equal to y is now given as an integral. So instead of the sum, we now have an integral in r, but otherwise we also have x times this density function divided by the other density function. More precisely, we have to divide by the density function of the random variable y. So you could say, instead of a conditional probability here, we have a conditional probability density. And in fact, often it's called exactly like that. So the whole thing here, the whole fraction, we call conditional density. So in summary, you see, this works exactly like in the discrete case, we just have to do the usual substitutions from the discrete to the continuous case. And then you see, we get a new function out here, which now we maybe call g of y. Simply because now the name f is already occupied a lot. However, still it's the same thing, if we want to get the new random variable, we just put the random variable y into the function g. 
And also here, please don't forget, this is just seen as a composition g after y. And now since g is well defined with this one dimensional integral, we get out a new random variable from omega into r. And now it's not a surprise, this is also called the conditional expectation of the random variable x given the random variable y. Okay, and now how we can calculate in this continuous case, we will see in future videos. This video here, I want to close with some general important properties for the conditional expectation. First, you might already see, in both cases, discrete and continuous, what happens if the random variables are independent. Because under this assumption, the conditional probability and the conditional density just factorizes. Hence, the parts with y will just cancel out and what remains are only sum or integral with respect to x. And then, without a surprise, this is just the expectation of x. So the ordinary expectation we already know. So maybe not so interesting at all, maybe more interesting is what happens if we have a product here. So x times y under the condition y. And then indeed, the same is true as well, y will cancel and only expectation of x remains. However, in both cases here, keep in mind, we would still see e of x as a random variable, just a constant random variable. Okay, so in conclusion, independent random variables make everything simple here. Another simple property could be the question, what is the condition expectation of x given x? So what do we expect x to be if we already know x? And of course, this does not change anything, we get the random variable x back. So this is expected and it immediately comes out of the calculation. And maybe a little bit harder to show is to calculate two times expectations. Namely, we want to calculate the ordinary expectation of the new random variable given by the conditional expectation. In other words, what we do here is to sum up and average all conditional probabilities. And then what we get out is of course the ordinary average again, so the expectation of x. Hence, it's totally related to the law we already know from the conditional probabilities and we call it the law of total probability. And therefore, it's the name that's used for this property of the conditional expectation as well. Okay, and now I can tell you, there are a lot of more properties for the conditional expectation we could write down, but maybe it's better to describe and discuss them in the moment we need them. And I already know, this will be only later in this video course. Okay, and with that, I really hope that I meet you in the next video, when we start with so-called stochastic processes. They are very interesting and now we already have the knowledge to deal with them. So have a nice day and bye bye.